Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim. If you're new here, make sure to say hello in the comments and tell me what you're currently reading. I love to chat with you guys about books and also meeting new people on here. So today I'm here to do the 20 questions book tag. I was tagged by Nat over at Nerdy Nat Reads. I'll go ahead and link her channel in the description. You should definitely go check her out. She is making awesome content that I am very much enjoying. Okay, so let's get into it. The first question is how many books are too many books for a series? I'm gonna say eight, <laughs> although keep in mind, this is coming from somebody who never reads a series. I have serious commitment issues and I usually can't stick with a series past three books, especially if it's a series that's still being published. So like if I have to wait a year for the next book to come out, I just completely lose interest and never finish that series. However, that being said, I don't think I would even start a series that had more than seven books because that just feels like way too long term and way too much of a commitment. Number two, how do you feel about cliffhangers? Yes, I, I feel good about them. I like cliffhangers. I especially like them at the end of a book in a series. Again, coming from someone who doesn't read series, I just, I need something to make me interested in picking up the next book and a cliffhanger does it. I also like cliffhangers at the end of chapters within a book. I think that it just keeps me engaged. I like feeling engaged. I like feeling like I don't want to put the book down. And so cliffhangers work for me. Hardcover or paperback? Mm, hardcover? Yeah, definitely hardcover. I think they look prettier. They're much more stable and harder to ruin. I can take the dust jacket off of it so that it stays pretty even when I'm reading it. They're just like more durable, you know, like they don't get bent usually unless you're like doing something crazy or hardcovers and they are just, you know, like they lay flat when you're reading them. So you don't have to like deal with that thing where like you have to hold on to the book or to like flop everywhere while you're trying to do something else. <laughs> yeah, hardcovers overall just work really well for me. I think a lot of people don't like hardcovers because they're so burdensome and heavy, but I think the benefits outweigh the negatives. Number four is favorite book. I don't know how you ask this question to a bunch of people who like books because like who can choose their favorite book? That's way too hard. The two books that are coming to mind are basically two books that I've read several times and would read again. I guess those would be considered favorites. I definitely like them, obviously, if I would read them over and over again. And those are To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This one, I know, kind of basic, but my favorite classic. I've read this probably like six or seven times because I taught it in my classes for quite a few years and I've also read it on my own quite a few times. I feel like this is a story where I get something new out of it every time I read it. And so I would definitely classify this as one of my favorites. And then Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. If you watched my favorite YA books video, you already know I'm obsessed with this book, but this is definitely my favorite YA contemporary. I've read it several times and will probably read it again because it just makes me very happy. Next is least favorite book. Again, I don't know, like I don't have a specific least favorite book. The only one that's really coming to mind that I read within the last couple of years is Animal Farm by George Orwell. I know people love this book, but I thought it was so boring and also a little confusing. I know it's like a fable, I get that, but I have no interest in like politics or history. And so all of the commentary that it was making was just of zero interest to me. I also don't really like stories with talking animals, so I think those compounded to just make a very unpleasant reading experience for me. I remember finishing it because it was super short and I think it was the only book I had with me on a camping trip, but yeah, not a fan. I do love 1984 though, so I guess I'm like kind of like half George Orwell fan. Like I liked one of his books, hated the other one. Number six is Love Triangles, yes or no? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> um, I think it's really hard to do a love triangle well. I'm not a huge fan of them. When I think of love triangles, I immediately think of Twilight and the fact that I was team Jacob and I hated every second of her being with Edward. I actually didn't like the third or fourth book mainly because she ends up with Edward and like Jacob just doesn't have a chance anymore. And it's so sad because he's just obviously the better choice, <laughs> but I just, 
Yeah, I don't know. I usually have a preference. Like I usually have one person that I want them to end up with. And I guess I always have unpopular opinions because it's never the person they actually end up with. And so I'm always disappointed. The only time I've ever seen a love triangle done well was in the Infernal Devices series. So there's a love triangle in that where I actually liked both guys equally. And so I was happy with whoever she ended up with. And in that case, they're okay because I end up happy either way. But most of the time, that is not the case. Seven is most recent book you could not finish. Okay, so I do have a book for this, but I also have a disclaimer. The book is The Only Plane in the Sky by Garrett M. Graff. This is an oral history of 9-11. I didn't DNF this book because I didn't like it. <laughs> this actually would have gotten four stars for me if I had finished it. It's really good. It's really interesting. It's told in a really cool format because it's basically like tying together all of these different oral histories or stories of people's experiences on 9-11. I think the history of 9-11 is really interesting. I was alive for it. I remember it very distinctly because I was living in New York at the time, not in the city, but on Long Island. And I know that this is like a moment that so many people hold in their memories. And so like, I'm very fascinated by it. The reason I stopped reading this <laughs> was because I don't know if you've noticed, but we're in a global pandemic and life is pretty depressing already. And there are a lot of really not great things happening in the world currently. So reading about a very depressing event and all of these people's like horrible stories about losing people that they loved was just a little too much on my psyche right now. So I do have intention of picking this back up at another time when life is less depressing, but I like could not continue. I got halfway through this and I was just like, no, I don't even want to pick this up because it's so sad and it's just making me feel sad. A book you are currently reading. I am currently reading this book. You can't see the dust jacket because it's not on here. So this is A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. Yes, I finally picked it up. I reread An Absolutely Remarkable Thing just a few days ago and it was amazing. Five stars. I'll talk about it in my wrap up. That was a reread. But A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, I've been waiting for this book to come out for a very long time. I'm very excited to be reading it. I plan to finish it today. I will give you more information in my August wrap up. But so far, very different from the first book and not sure how I feel about it yet. Last book that I recommended to someone. There's like a very long list of this because we just started school last week and I have the kids do a 40 book challenge every year where they have to read like books in different genres and they have to try to read 40 books by the end of the year. And so I've gotten so many emails of like, can you give me recommendations for this genre? So I've probably given like over a hundred recommendations in the last week. One of those, probably The Great Gatsby, I recommended to one of the kids as a classic. Love that classic. It takes place on Long Island. I'm from Long Island, so it's basically required reading. And I guess I just relate to it. Something about reading a book that takes place where you live just makes it so much more relatable. Oldest book you've read by publication date. So I had to look on my Goodreads for this, but it was shockingly the Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie, which I very recently read. So you can tell by my answer to this question that I do not read old books. Was I supposed to read old books for school? Absolutely. Did I read them? I did not. <laughs> I tend to only like contemporary classics. Like if it was written before 1900, I generally don't like it. So none of this is surprising. Next is the newest book that you read by publication date. That is... Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. If you have been here for a while, you know that I am obsessed with this book. It's my favorite book that I've read so far this year. It is so, so good. If you like horror or mystery thriller and you haven't read this book yet, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but you need to pick this up immediately. Number 12 is a favorite author. So I'm gonna go super basic on this one. My favorite author is probably John Green. <laughs> That's just kind of reality. Uh, I've been reading John Green's books for a long time. I enjoy, if not love, most of his books. I appreciate him as a person. I listen to his podcast with his brother Hank, uh, Dear Hank and John. Great podcast if you like podcasts. Um, I also watch their Vlog Brothers channels. I watch all of his Crash Course videos. I just love the Green Brothers and John Green is an author that's like an auto buy author. I always enjoy his books. 13 is buying or borrowing books. Both, uh, depends on the situation. I do both. I definitely use my library a lot. 
I've been using it less since it closed <laughs> uh, for the pandemic. And so at the moment, I can't get physical books from there. I don't think they might have started doing curbside, but I am definitely more of a physical book person. So although I have been using the library to get ebooks and audiobooks, I haven't been doing it as often as I would be getting books from there if it was open and I could get physical books. So I have been doing definitely more buying than borrowing over the last couple of months. Also, retail therapy, like I'm sitting here bored, there's nothing to do, I can't go anywhere. What else are you gonna do but buy books, you know? Like just makes you feel better. 14 is a book you dislike that everyone else seems to love. So two books that I read recently come to mind for this one. And the first is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Sanz. I don't have us anymore, I donated it. This is a book that has insanely high ratings on Goodreads and people like rave about this book. It's like their favorite book of all time. They just love it and I don't get it. I didn't like it. I thought it was boring. I hated the narrative style. Dante was basically a manic pixie dream girl, but like in boy format, he just like fluttered around like writing poetry and saving birds and that irritated me. And Aristotle was the most unlikable character. I have no issue with not liking the main character, but being inside of his head with all of his angst and just like bad decisions and just bad attitude was so unpleasant like I just wanted to get away from him but you couldn't because you were in his head for the entire book. The second that comes to mind is one I just read about a week ago so that is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. So many people are raving about this book. It's all over bookstagram, it's all over booktube, everybody's like this book made me so happy it was the greatest book ever. I totally respect that. If you liked it and it made you happy, awesome. I'm happy that you found a book that you like. I did not like this book. I thought it was really bad. I thought it was boring and cringy and so many other things I am sure I will rant about in my August wrap up. So I won't expose you to it right now, but oh my gosh, not the book for me. <laughs> Number 15 is bookmarks or dog ears. Bookmarks, I keep bookmarks like pretty much scattered around my apartment for anywhere I might be reading. And if I don't have a bookmark, I'll just use like a piece of paper, receipt, whatever random thing I have laying around, I'll just kind of shove in the book. I do not dog ear my pages. I don't like to bend my pages. I'm not like vehemently against people who dog ear their books. Like if that works for you, you do you, you know? Uh, but I don't like doing that to my own books. Number 16 is a book you can always reread. I kind of already answered this in my favorite book question, but Fangirl and To Kill a Mockingbird, I could reread over and over again and probably still enjoy. 17 is Can You Read While Listening to Music? No, 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 no. <laughs> I cannot have any noise while I am reading at all. So I am like somebody who needs absolute quiet to focus on anything and that includes reading. So I would love to be somebody who could listen to music while reading because that sounds like an amazing experience, especially if you have like good soundtrack, but can't do classical music, any type of music, can't even do ambient noise, like rain in the background. No, doesn't work for me. Like literally any type of noise is gonna distract me from focusing on what I'm reading. So I need dead quiet, which is why I also can't really read in public because any like noise going on around me will completely pull me out of the story. 18 is one point of view or multiple. Totally depends on the book, depends on the story, depends on how well it's done. For example, I'm currently reading the second book in Hank Green's duology. The first book was written in one perspective. It was written from April's point of view and I loved that. April was hilarious, I loved her point of view. And that was like one of the things I really enjoyed about that book. The second book is written in multiple points of view and I'm honestly not loving it. Like I only want to read April's parts because she is funny and I like her character and a lot of the other parts are just kind of boring me. So I think that's like an issue that I have with point of views multiple point of views is that if I don't enjoy one point of view, I kind of just like want to skip past that and get to the next one or I have to like push myself through that section because I'm not enjoying that point of view. However, one book where I feel like multiple point of views was done really well is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. So that series is told from two perspectives, Adrian and Nova. So you have like a villain and like a hero. 
that I thought was done really well because you find out information as the reader from both sides that like make the story more enjoyable. And without those two perspectives, it would be a very one-sided like one layered story. So I think that's a case where it's done really well. 19 is do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Most of the time over multiple days, but that's not a rule. Like I can definitely read a book in one sitting. I just tend to read longer books, I guess, or just books that I wouldn't read in one sitting. If it's a graphic novel or something I can finish in like two to three hours, yes. I'm not a super fast reader. So like most books take me more than three hours to finish. And after three hours, I'm usually like ready to get up and do something else. So I would say most books I do over multiple days. And lastly, <laughs> number 20 is, who do you tag? So I'm really bad at remembering people's channel names and I neglected to write any down before I started filming this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tag some people in the description that I have been watching and enjoying lately. So definitely check that out, check out their channels and go over and give their channels some love. That wraps it up for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below for more bookish content for me in the future. I will see you guys in the next video.